You welcome back to the Pulse on Joy News. And of course, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook, on X, and of course, on myjoyonline.com. Let's settle on some other stories now. And the minority in parliament is against government decision to deploy the military to enforce a ban on the exportation of grains. The deployment is part of government's response to the drought in the north of the country, which has triggered a possible food crisis, addressing journalists in Parliament, minority spokesperson on defense and interior, James Agaga, said it is not the duty of the military uh, to police Ghana's borders, and the military is only used as a means of last resort. The decision by the Akufado Baumia led government to deploy <coughs> the military to border towns across the country to supposedly enforce the government's ban on the exportation of grain from the country in the wake of the reported drought-induced crop failures in the northern part of the country. The minority takes note of the rollout of measures by the government to address the potentially devastating impact of the dry spell on food security in our country. The deployment of the military to our borders to ostensibly perform the task of the enforcement of a ban on the exportation of grain raises several questions and suspicions. First, neither the Minister for Food and Agriculture nor the Minister for Defense, who announced the ban and deployment of the military, adduced any evidence to establish the inability of our immigration and customs services to enforce the prohibition in question to warrant the military's involvement. The Immigration Service is statutorily empowered to manage and patrol the country's borders as a first line of defense. The Customs Service, on the other hand, complements the Immigration Service in the exercise of its preventive functions along our borders. Consequently, any attempt to deploy the military when there is no evidence to show that the Immigration and Customs Services will be overwhelmed in the, for, in the enforcement of the ban on the exportation of grain heightens our suspicions. Indeed, let's get some clarity on this. And parliamentary affairs correspondent Kokua Sante was at this news conference, and he joins me. Vice, we'll also be speaking to a member on this committee, Peter Peter Tobu. Also, so Kaku, I mean, where is this suspicion coming from? say that in 2016 and in particular 2020 i should say in the lead up to the 2020 general election government did say that they were studying secessionist attempts in the voter region for which reason they deployed military men to that region mm. in their opinion that was just a ruse by the government to intimidate voters and ensure that voters do not turn up in their numbers and they do not believe that the military should be used to enforce a green export ban because the military is only the option of last resort. They say, like you heard in the tape, that the customs and, and custom division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, supporting the, 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 the men and women who patrol our borders every day are enough. And their suspicion is that it appears government is just using this as an attempt to suppress the votes ahead of the 2024 election. Listen to James Agaga make that allegation. that in the run-up to the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections, the Akufadu Baumia government heavily deployed the country's military, particularly in the Volta and Oti regions, as part of a carefully orchestrated strategy that scared eligible voters from exercising their franchise. The pretext for the massive deployment was the alleged secessionist threat posed by what has now been established as phantom groups. Interestingly, once the elections were over, the secessionist threat suddenly evaporated. Let me take that again. Interestingly, once the elections were over, the secessionist stress threat suddenly evaporated. Subsequently, the Akufado Baumia government ordered the military to return to barracks. Such is the political chicanery of the government we are dealing with. So Ghanaians have reason 
to take the recent announcement with a pinch of salt. <laughs> the Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Brian Achampon, who made the border closure announcement, is the very person who has declared time and again to do everything to wreck the chances of the NDC to win the December 7th, 2024 elections. His reckless and incendiary statements have attracted widespread condemnation and exposed him as the arrowhead of the MPP gang working to undermine free and fair elections and thus destabilize our dear country. Honorable Brian Champo will stop at nothing to execute the dastardly plot hatched by the government, which he brazenly accepts. All right, thank you very much, Kokwasa. And let me bring in a member on this committee, Peter Nancini Tobu. Um, uh, Honorable Tobu, good afternoon. Welcome to the poll. So, I mean, we've been made to understand that this is an emergency situation that requires all hands on deck, all hands on board to deal with this matter. Therefore, I'm trying to appreciate where this fear and pessimism is coming from, from, from your side. My brother, let me say good afternoon to you. Um, good afternoon to all my brothers and sisters mm. uh, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your station, and good afternoon to our cherished listeners and viewers. Mm. Um, let me just probably summarize the whole press conference in a single statement. Right. What we are saying is that Today, if somebody tries to export one bag of milk across Hamelin to Burkina Faso, you require a soldier to go and stop him. Mm. The Ghana Armed Forces has a mandate. The Ghana Immigration Service has a mandate. The Customs, Excise, and Preventive Services of the Ghana Revenue Authority has a mandate. And it comes to protecting our borders ordinarily. It is the duty of the Ghana Immigration Service and that of the Customs Assets and Preventive Services. Mm. If it is a threat that is beyond their capacity, you can get the military involved. But here is the case. Excuse me. We live in a very technological world. Right. And we have the Ghana Meteorological Services Authority or, or Department. And I'm not very sure that Meteor would have advised government of the change in climate and the change in weather and the likely impact of um, not enough rainfall this year. I'm not sure that they wouldn't have done that. So we are quite aware of this drought that befell us. That notwithstanding, what is the business of a soldier at the, at the border to prevent somebody to, from carrying uh, grain across the border to go and sell? Unless we are saying that as we speak, the Ghana Immigration Service is so non-functional to the point that even in collaboration with the Customs Assets and Preventive Services, they are so ineffective that we will need our military to do this job. My brother, let me be honest with you. Mm. Many years ago, in other words, some few years ago, if you find a soldier in town in his camel or his green green, do you know the amount of respect and, and, and reverence that they attract in that uniform? Mm. Is it the same today? It is not. The reality is that we are gradually destroying the hard-won image of the Ghana Armed Forces. The Armed Forces that we revere so much, and we are so proud of them globally when you get out of this country. Mm. We are gradually misapplying the army, denting their image, and it will come back to Hunter. One day, you will find a soldier in town, and it is happening recently. You find a soldier in town being beaten by civilians, and you wonder, is it the real military uniform that these guys are wearing? The uniform alone attracts respect. So when you even see a soldier misbehaving, because of the respect for that uniform, nobody has the guts to go attack them physically. It is happening now. So let's speak to it. And the fact that misapplication of the armed forces is a dangerous thing to our democracy. It is bad. We have enough men and women in uniform from the other side, be it the immigration or customs, to have dealt with this matter. Unless there is something ulterior that we do not know. So... I mean, the, the deployment has already started. So I'm wondering what, what, what more you want beyond making the score. Well, we've cried out to Ghanaians. Everybody have heard us. And we are in an election year. And we are saying that, like what happened in 2020, when they deployed heavily in the, in the Volta and Oti regions, mm. 
with, 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 with a claim that they were trying to deal with secessionists, only to recall the military back to barracks immediately after the election, completely telling that that was a red herring. It is the same strategy that they want to unveil. And we are saying, in the 2024 elections, lessons learned should prevent us from repeating what we can call misapplication of the military. Mm. When we begin to lose respect for the military, I think this democracy will not be safe. And we will say it, and let Ghanaians hear it, everybody will hear, one after the other. The early warning signs of electoral violence are too glaring to be ignored by well-meaning Ghanaians. The, the early warning signs mm. from national stability to be the, protected are too glaring for anybody within the international community, all our partners, they are too glaring for them to ignore. So all of us, let's see it. Let's talk about it. And if you want to ignore it, let's ignore it. The, and when you ignore it and the consequences fall, fall on that, let's all be silent and enjoy it or suffer it in silence. So the, the Minister for Food and Agriculture says that this deployment may hopefully be over by October early November. So I ask, I mean, how politically motivated could this, this decision be if it's not going to be extended to uh, the, the, the end of the year? Let me, let me tell you this. The Minister of Agriculture should know, and he knows better, that if the rain has delayed, and now the rain has started falling, it is proper for you to scientifically be able to project, if the rain can fall two consecutive months, September, October, the best defense the best strategy for me is to let the farmers rip plant again mm. and give them some variety of, of, of seeds that can probably uh, be something that we can harvest within two months. If we're able to do that, we are fighting the, the famine that is imminent. Mm. We are producing enough to feed ourselves. And nobody will be afraid of any import, uh, exportation because within two months we'll have enough food in the country. That is the way to go. By asking soldiers, I am not saying that preventing the exportation is a bad thing. Mm. But what I'm saying is that the people who are supposed to prevent the exportation have a mandate to do that, and they are capable. Why yeah. are we sidestepping them? Pe perhaps they need more Why men. Why is that everything must be military? Everything must, are we militarizing our democracy? And I'm saying that perhaps they need more men. They need more men to do this job so that we don't have any filtration. They need more men. Perhaps. More men that they... You see, let's, let's rate our military well. When you need more men for an internal security matter like preventing export, it cannot be the military. Mm. And it should not be the military. Take it from me. It is a wrong step. You think that the military are happy to be deployed on such menial jobs? They are not, because their image is at stake. Well, we are in Ghana, and somebody has the power. He is the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. It's not a permanent position. It is not permanent. It was meant for him to provide us with some leadership, which he has failed, and we are continuously failing. I thank you so much, uh, and I wish you safe travels because I understand that you are traveling. Uh, Honorable Peter Lanchini Tobu, member of the Defense and Interior Committee, still related to politics and the fact that John Dramani Mahama, the NDC's flag bearer, has vowed to shake up the management of Cocoa Board if elected, stating that the cocoa sector had deteriorated under the MPP government. He promises to restore the industry to its former glory. One of the reasons why we're having a rapid depreciation in the city, apart from the debt defaults, which is one of the major, major reasons, is also that traditional sectors that provided inflows of foreign currency have collapsed. The major and minor season in the cocoa industry this year is providing only 447 tons, 1,000 metric tons of cocoa. Cocoa has been a dependable, you know, source of foreign currency for since Gordon Gagisbeck's time. <laughs> Unfortunately, under this administration, management of the cocoa sector has virtually collapsed the sector. And um, I remember before I left office, every bank wanted Ghana's cocoa syndication. It was something that was sought after and it made an injection of about $2 billion every year directly into our economy. Unfortunately, last year, we went for 800 million. I don't think we got all of it, but this year there are no takers. Ghana's syndication has collapsed. And so we um, brought in almost $2 billion in uh, cocoa syndication, and Ghana's cocoa syndication was sought after by all international banks. Yeah. 
and uh, almost 2 billion was brought in at 1.5%. In the last season, when we tried to go for 800 million, we borrowed at 8%. And this year, there were no takers. Um, the cocoa board went on, nobody was interested in Ghana's cocoa syndication. And uh, they very disingenuously came and said that they were opening a new era in financing cocoa and that we're not going to go outside to borrow any money, we're going to finance it ourselves. Where are you going to find that financing? At 30%? So um, we went, there were no takers. And so Cocoa Board said, oh no, we're introducing a new era of, you know, not going outside to finance our cocoa purchases. We'll do it ourselves domestically. But I mean, really, where are you going to get that kind of money to be able to uh, do that? So resuscitating the cocoa sector is one first priority. Shaking up Cocoa Board and reforming it, making it more efficient is something that we need to do urgently so that we can see a turnaround in the cocoa sector in the next uh, two, three seasons at least. It will bring back, you know, Ghana to its pride of place in the cocoa sector. Right, so this is a pause here on Joy News, and we're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to have that conversation with the Bank of Ghana officials. We're going to talk about the accounts that you are operating, the event that you are not available, the person you've assigned to take over that account. Bank of Ghana says that until that person is containing a will, it won't happen. We'll understand why when we come back.